Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey, guys. Uh, another video review for me here. For those of you who saw my community update, it's been a bit of a week. Um, I'm, I still don't have a car. <laughs> Uh, and then my phone dropped into the ocean, so it's been uh, a little bit of a fun past few days. But I did get the chance to see the Gray Man. I will say, uh, in terms of a $200 million budget from Netflix being now this is currently their most expensive project ever done before it was Red Notice and then, which still makes absolutely no goddamn sense to me, um, and then uh, before that was The Irishman, which does make sense to me. The Gray Man, to put it very bluntly, is every single spy movie you've seen before about an agent finding out about something and going rogue. However, it does have very good action scenes for a PG-13 movie. It is probably the best you could get from a PG-13 movie, and that is because it is directed by the Russo brothers, known for directing the uh, most of the Captain America movies, as well as Endgame and Infinity War. They bring a lot of the choreography, fight scene techniques that they used in Winter Soldier, and they bring it into this film by making Ryan Gosling, my dream man, essentially a Terminator. The dude barely takes anything without stride. He is always getting the shit kicked out of him in what most people would say is the shit getting kicked out of them, but he kind of just walks it off. The dude gets stabbed, hit by cars, hit by bullets, hit by trains almost, and the dude just keeps on walking. And it's a pretty cool, fun time in that sense. The year they essentially the film is about Ryan Gosling having been a former criminal having killed someone in a justifiable but not legally justifiable manner and he gets inducted into Billy Bob Thornton's Sierra group and he's number six which you will hear quite a bit in this movie. He gets contracted to do all of these hit jobs with the CIA that most people would not do and he over time becomes a super killing machine. We don't get to see that though we just see him be in prison and then he is doing a job in China where he has to kill someone else. However, through a little bit of desertion, it turns out that this other person is another Sierra who has a little bit of dirt, some big dirt apparently, on some of the CIA handlers who have now come into power in the organization. And then Six is put onto this merry chase of trying to figure out what is on this drive, trying to evade people who are hired by screwy, shady, CIA people, one of them being Chris Evans, who I think he's having more fun with this character of Lloyd than we have kind of just watching the movie. Chris wanted to be a villain and give him credit for that. He is a fun villain. However, when he's not talking, a lot of the actions that his character does doesn't really have any kind of justifiable means. He does one of his fight scenes in flat tops, almost. Like, these are slip-on shoes. I I'm sorry, but I can't find anyone justifiably threatening when he's got slip-on nice shoes. Now, was this kind of a breaker for me for the fight scene? It wasn't the only thing that was breaking me for this particular fight scene, but I just remember seeing him with the shoes on, and at one point I think they even come off, and I was just like, why did, why, 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 why is he in these shoes? <laughs> I understand he's a douche, which he does a very good job of being a douche in this movie. It just did not help in terms of adding sort of presence to this film. And something that should be taken from the Terminator comment I made about Ryan Gosling and then Lloyd's lack of threatening footwear is that the idea of risk or threat to Ryan Gosling's character is kind of fleeting. It's not as strong as it should be considering the multitude of shit that he goes through. He's put into situations that hinder him more than his character being hindered himself. Like instead of him receiving any kind of wound, injury, anything that, you know, kind of convey some form of realism or some sort of threat to his character, he is put in situations like at one point he has to try and deal with a gunfight with multiple enemies all around him on different sides, all the while being handcuffed to a bench. 
and he has to try and reach for a gun, has to try and work around this very limited space that he has. And I would say is that's probably the most threatening bit that he's ever in, being handcuffed to a bench, because everything else he does throughout this movie is insane. He, at one point, lets loose a grenade, which some of you guys may have seen that clip where he just drops the grenade in front of himself and Lloyd, and he runs right through a window crashes through drops about a story with one bare foot mind you and he just like mm, yeah what what shot what size shoes are these people it's like okay i can believe some things but there's a very good easy reference right there to die hard when bruce willis is walking through the building he's got no shoes on and then one point alan rickman's like hey shoot the glass and he has to deal with absolutely fucked up feet for the rest of the movie after that point and that's something that Ryan doesn't go through. He just never has anything that debilitates him except other people sacrificing themselves for him. The amount of people who actually yeet themselves for Gosling in this film is kind of surprising. Like some of them you expect and some of them you're like, okay, you didn't have to do that, but oh well. There is a side plot involving Billy Bob Thornton's niece who Ryan Gosling has sort of come to care for. Um, but again, this is also a trope that you're very much used to in these types of movies. And I've been kind of railing on it for a little bit, but that's just because of how very standard the story is. Now, you'll see that some people have given this kind of a very low rating. If, if last time I checked, it was in the high sixes on IMDb. And to be frank, it's kind of justified to be there. Despite the really cool action sequences, there's a point where they're on some sort of train thing in Prague or, or something like that. And it's getting the absolute shit shot out of it. It's going into a building, Gosling jumps off onto a car. Uh, there's some really cool gun sh uh, shootouts involved with cops and bad guys, and they're just going to town inside this area that is very, very much not undercover anymore. And this film does try its best with trying to push that envelope for a PG-13 movie, but in the back of your mind, you're thinking John Wick would just have blood all over the fucking place. And there is a movie, there is a Netflix movie that funnily enough, also involves another Avenger and involves uh, one, I think, of the Russo brothers in it as well. And that's Extraction. Now, for any of you who haven't seen that movie yet, good God, go and see it. It's so fucking good. But the other issue is I kept on thinking about that movie while this movie was happening. Now, uh, does Extraction have a heavy plot? No. It has actually a pretty standard plot. If anything, it has less elements to it than that of this movie does. But, but, there is two very big differences with this movie. One, Ryan Gosling's character is very kind of mute. He's just himself throughout this movie, but like in a stoic way. Whereas Chris Hemsworth has a very tortured character to him and he is kind of going on the, the sense that he just wants to die, but he wants to go out guns blazing and trying to do the right thing. and. Throughout the movie, he's getting the shit kicked out of him and he is taking those hits. He gets hit, he gets shot. He is being broken down as the movie progresses. And all the while, there are also these shady different factions that are coming in trying to all capture this one kid that Chris Hemsworth is protecting. And also, it's actually a pretty cool amalgamation of Hollywood and Bollywood. Now, most movies would try, like some have in the Hollywood sphere have tried this terribly to make it really obvious that they're working either with Chinese actors or they're working with Bollywood actors. But this movie didn't care about that. They're just like, hey, it's in India. Let's get some really big indie, uh, like uh, Bollywood Indian actors in this movie and let's see what happens. And it works out really well. So going back to The Gray Man, yeah, I kind of kept on thinking about that movie and right up at up until the end, I was thinking, holy crap, this movie's gone over two hours when it did not need to be this long. Now, apparently the film is done successfully enough that it's going to get a sequel and even maybe a spinoff, which I'm very surprised about considering the reception for this movie, but maybe the numbers have been good enough to it. Like I said, I like seeing Gosling in movies. I find it very funny that this was the big thing that he's going to be a part of a franchise. He's, this is going to be a franchise apparently. So this is the biggest thing. He turned down working for the Avengers. He's turned down working for DC, but no, he's going to take this random generic uh, spy guy movie and take that for what it's worth, which sure, cool. 
Overall, the Gray Man is a fun time if you turn your brain off. Uh, there's some very well choreographed action sequences. There's some pretty cool action set pieces. Gosling is Gosling and I like Gosling, so I think that worked in my favor. Chris Evans gives a funny turn at being a villain. Does it work all the time in dialogue sense? Yes. In actual uh, storytelling sense, not so much. It, there's a few parts where you're just going to be like, okay, why are we still going on with this? Side characters in this movie are kind of eh, there's no one really memorable, there's no really memorable character trait of this film. It's just a fun, very, very high budget generic action movie. So in the end, I'm going to give The Gray Man a very generous 4 out of 7. I enjoyed it, I thought it was fun, I could watch a couple of the action sequences again, but that's kind of it. Everyone else in this movie is cool-ish, I guess. Anna DeMars is fun, like, she's cool, she's got more of that action stuff. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. Hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Tell me what you guys thought about this in the comments below. Did you guys enjoy this movie? What did you think about it? Do you think it's better than Red Notice, at least? Tell me that. Anyways, that's all. See you guys later.